This week's winning designer is Victor. Mm -hmm. Oh, Miss Oh, Miss Your Paul said. I just thought about it. I am live. <laughs> That's her show, y'all. <laughs> Make sure. Da -da 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 -da. What is she talking about? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Hey, you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me on today. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So listen, you guys, I know that you guys are not used to me going live throughout the day, but that's okay. You guys can catch the replay or you can, um, you know, share this broadcast out. You can catch the replay. You know, you can do all that great stuff. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to come on in and let you know that I am live. Let you know that I'm here. La, 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 la. Got a few moments. Oh, listen, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. If you guys didn't listen to prayer last night, baby, y'all missed out on the treat. So you can go to the social media page, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. All right? So I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Let me know. You guys are here with me. Yes, come on in. Oh, Come on in and y'all do what I'm going to do. I'm going to share this broadcast out really fast to let somebody know so they can let somebody know. Yes. Okay. All right. So hold on one second. Hey, you guys. Hello there. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How y'all? How y'all? Oh, da 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 Don't, don't. Tell me about no work. Okay, get your stuff. Oh. <laughs> hey, Miss Cole. Hey, Deandra. Hey, Anissa. Hello, Miss Williams. God bless you guys. So listen, listen, let me just go ahead and tell you guys. Yeah, I would not believe what happened to me this week. So I'm going to tell you guys the whole story. And then I'm going to also let you guys know what I learned from this. All right. So listen to this. So this week, someone had scheduled to take a tour, right? They scheduled to take a tour of the building. And so when they came here to the link, I told them, like, I was hearing about their vision and all of that, right? And so I told them that a part of their vision may be best suited at our other location. And I told her, I said, well, whenever you get a chance, I want you to schedule to take a tour so that you can see our other location. And she said, well, do you have any time now to see so I can see it. And I told her, I said, well, yeah, yeah, I can go ahead and do it because our other location is about two miles from the link. So the connect is about two miles here, right? So we get down there to the connect or whatever. That building is 12,000 square feet and it's broken down into three parts. So on one side, this is where we have our beauty professionals and our business office, the middle section that we reserve it for events. And then on the last side, um, we have a church that is in that location, right? So let me know y'all listening to y'all. I'm telling y'all, y'all got to listen to this story, okay? Let me see who here, okay? Hey, Lakeisha. Hey, Frankie. Hey, Phaedra. Hey, hey Katrina. Hey, Connie, you got to listen to this, okay? So when we get down there to the connector, whatever, we walk through, you know, the beauty side and she loved it. Then we walk through the event side. She loved it as well. And I told her, I said, hey, you need to see this other, you know, side. And I realized, like, I didn't have my key. So I started contacting JD. And so y'all know that JD, he normally answered my phone call. But this particular time, he wasn't answering my call. And so, you know, I called him back to back. So I called him about five times because the lady, you know, she's standing right there watching me call my man who ain't answering my phone. And then at the same time, I'm trying to figure out, like, what's going on and why you ain't answering my call all of a sudden. So anywho, okay, so, you know, I'm processing all of that while I'm standing there. And so he didn't answer the phone. I don't have my key, 
We do have a lockbox there, but I didn't. I couldn't remember the code to the lockbox. So I called my stepdaughter and I said, "Hey, Jaden, I hey, I need I need um you to tell your dad that I need the code to the box or whatever." And she was like, "Oh, I'm not with daddy. Do you want me to call?" And I was like, "No, that's okay." So while the lady was just standing there, I said this. Now this is where it's about to. Okay, okay. So as I was like, imagine us standing outside of the building, right, y'all? So we're standing outside of the building, and I told her, I told her, I said, you know what? We're going to have to just reschedule this to another time. Y'all, this lady, as I am saying that to her, I look past her, and I see my car rolling. Now, listen, you guys, when I saw my car rolling, I'm trying to figure out, like, what's going on. I'm trying to think about whether or not somebody is stealing my car, have jumped in my car, stealing it. While I'm right there, y'all. So I'm watching my car roll backwards. And at this time, I realized that my car isn't rolling backwards. Uh, like, like somebody didn't jump in the car. My car is actually rolling backwards, you guys. So this is our Mini Coupe. So the Mini Coupe is a five speed, right? So, you know, like manual speed. Uh, so, you know, it's real sexy for a girl to drive a, you know, like a, a straight shift or whatever gear. Whatever we used to say back in the day. So that's how I really learned how to drive a car. All right? So now I'm watching my car back back. So if y'all know anything about where our other building is located, you know that if you back back, you going right into the busy, like, um, a highway. You like, on Center Point Parkway, like, it is constantly busy. So as soon as my car rolled back, like as it was rolling back, y'all know I'm from the hood, right? I'm from the street. So when you got a hood chick that turned godly, you know what I'm saying? Like we love the Lord, but that hood stuff like, first thing I do, I try to go into survivor mode. I'm not thinking about the car. I'm not thinking about myself. I'm thinking about all the people that's on Center Point Parkway that can, you know, like just potentially be hurt or cause chaos. So y'all know what I did? I began to run after the car, y'all. Y'all, this is a true statement. Is it not, Miss Loretta? Okay. True statement, y'all. So I began to run after the car. I'm trying to jump in the car as it is rolling down the hill onto Center Point Parkway, y'all. So the lady, she looking at all of this. She's screaming, no, don't hurt yourself. No, don't wait, no. And so I'm still like, I like, I'm focused now because in my mind, I got to stop this car from rolling out into Center Point Parkway. Y'all, oh my God. And so like when it hit the, the end like of the parking lot, y'all, when it hit the end, there was a car that went by. Now I'm looking and running. Y'all got to know all of this happened like in five to 10 seconds. So I'm looking and running and I see all of these cars. I see an 18 wheeler. So y'all, I'm running up to the car on Center Point Parkway, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> like y'all, like I'm scared, like I can't believe this, my, my eyes, like my life is flashing before my eyes, like true story, y'all, listen to this, I promise you that I must have a whole freaking angel that guards my life and my world, because when I ran out into the interstate, I'm doing like this. I'm screaming. Y'all, people are blowing their horns at me. So if y'all live on this side of town, y'all probably was blowing at me. Blowing their horn at me because keep in mind, they don't know what's going on. All they see is a car. And so they probably, because y'all know that the windows are tinted. So you can't see inside the car. So they probably thinking that somebody like inside the car right that's running out on, on you know on this highway and so like i am just trying to like lord like like he, oh let me tell you this so in the moment in the moment yeah, so so like like y'all in that moment there are some times when things begin to happen to you that you don't have time to pray about it because i did not have time to pray but I knew that I had enough prayers already in storage, okay? So this is what you guys need to hear. Hear me when I say this. Is that when you are praying, sometimes your prayer 
curse and the things that come out of your mouth, that is not just for your right now. Now, some of the things that you are praying about, you're praying concerning your future because I didn't know that this day was going to happen. Do you hear me? I didn't know that this was going to happen. So here I am. I'm running out in the middle of the uh, middle of the uh, highway. And y'all, let me tell y'all, it was about 20 cars coming from the other direction, including an 18-wheeler, y'all. Let me tell you, it is by the grace of God. I didn't get hit. My car didn't get hit. And listen, nobody was hurt. Y'all, I was able to jump in the car and I was able to drive my car back, you know, up, um, back to the connect y'all. So my car, it, 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 it rolled from our building all the way across the street to the church. So if y'all know anything about the area, y'all know like, yo, this could have really been bad. So let me tell you guys this part. So, so that same morning when I was getting ready to leave the house, I said this one sentence prayer because I want to encourage somebody because you may not feel like you have all the language for prayer. I'm telling you that God pays attention to the genuineness of your prayers. So you don't have to, you know, have all of the antics that people have. You don't have to have like a certain prayer language because sometimes people will make you feel as if your prayers are ineffective because you don't have a sound because you don't, you, you don't articulate it the way that everybody else does. I said this one thing to God before I left the house. I said, God, protect us even when we're not paying attention. That was it. I said it one time. I said, God, protect us even when we're not paying attention. Y'all, because my schedule had been interrupted, when I jumped out the car, I didn't, uh, I didn't let the emergency brakes all the way up. Right. So when you park a car, when you have a, a manual speed, you got to let the let the brakes all the way up or you got to park it like in, in one. I normally park it in one. So to present prevent the rolling. But I said, God, God, protect us from the things like when we we're we're not paying attention. And I believe because I paid, prayed that that morning by the afternoon. The angels of God was assisting me during a time where I could have lost my life. Other people could have been in danger. Y'all have no idea how close the 18 wheelers and how many cars had to stop in order to allow me, you know what I'm saying, like to escape that danger and it hurt. And so for all of you all who don't think that prayer works, let me tell you that your prayers and the answers and the solution that you need, that it shows up in the timing in which you least expect it. And this is why you got to have something in your storage box. This is what this is why you have to have something that God can pull from, from your faithfulness to your measure of faith, to the measure of your work. Come on, to your dedication to time and prayer. Like you got to give God something to work with. And I believe because of my 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 personal prayers and my heart for God, my love for God, you know, the, my my integrity, my motives behind what I do. I believe like God dispatched his angels in in that moment. And I'm not saying that he don't dispatch angels for other people. And there are times where I feel as if he should have dispatched angels. I, I feel like he should have dispatched angels for my nephew that died in the road. You know what I'm saying? But I said all of this to say is that you don't know when your prayers are going to be answered and you don't know how God is going to answer your prayers. And so like, I just want to encourage you that to use your little measure of faith that you have and don't try to sound so eloquent in speech when you are talking to the father. The Lord is most concerned about that, about the, the daughter and father relationship, the son and, and father types of, of relationship that he can have with you. So I want to encourage you to speak, to allow your heart to speak to God when you run, run out of words. 
You just sit in, in the presence of God. When you don't know what to say, you don't have to make up anything to say. Just sit in his presence is enough. As a matter of fact, I just heard the Lord say, when they don't know what to do, the Lord said that I inhabit, I live in the praises of my people. And so if you don't have words to say, just begin to praise him because in your praise is where God will live. Oh my God. Thank you for sharing this out. In your praise is where the Lord will live. And so I just want to encourage you guys, for those of you all who feel discouraged in your prayer life, when you feel discouraged in which your walk with God, when you feel as if it's not working, if you feel when God is not listening to you, I'm telling you, it's those little bitty prayers that you, as, as a matter of fact, it's the little conversations that you have with God that means so much to, to him. It's, it's the conversation that you have with him. It's not when you are, it's not when you um, are going before him with your title as a prophet, as a teacher, as a leader. No, he said, humble yourself. And so when you humble yourself, that means that you're taking the lowest form. You're taking the lowest position. Humbling yourselves mean that I'm taking off Dr. D, I'm taking off Prophet D, I'm taking off the Teacher D, I'm taking off the Intercessor D, I'm taking that off, and I'm just coming to him naked. I'm not even trying to hide my shortcomings. I'm not trying to hide my sins from God. I'm coming before him naked. And I believe that this is where many people... They, that they miss God and this is why they struggle with feeling like the presence of God. You don't know how to feel as a daughter. You don't know how to feel as a son of God because you're not humble enough. Because you got too much on. You got too many titles on. You're, you're, you're not naked okay, in the presence of God. Let me tell you, when, when you really want to feel like the essence of who God is in your life, let me tell you, do it when you are physically naked. Do it when you're physically naked in, in the privacy of your own home. Get physically naked in the presence of God. Because when you're physically naked, you are exposing like even your flaws in the natural, which will allow you to expose your flaws in, in the inward mo most courts of who you are. Oh my God, this is so good to me. So when you're naked in the, in the presence of God, like physically it allows you to expose and it even allow God to check your heart. It, it, it is, I, I don't know, it's just like making, making ways. It's allowing God to really see like who you are. You get what I'm saying? So try just being naked because there's another level of vulnerability that has to come to the believers. Even, even with your personal struggles, even if you're struggling with addiction, you're struggling with your lifestyle, you're, you're struggling with your relationships, you're struggling with your money, like you're struggling with your purpose, with your mind, no matter what you're struggling with, when you go before God, and I want y'all to try it, that when you go before God and you are naked, let me tell you, you are just showing God how vulnerable you are. And then you won't even begin to recognize your vulnerability. Watch this. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, when God was looking for them in their naked, in their purest state, sin caused them to cover themselves. Who am I talking to? Sin will always uh, uh, make you cover yourself. Sin will always make you hide yourself. As a matter of fact, when they, when they hid their physical appearance from God, they also picked up shame. And so oftentimes when we are hiding ourselves from God, when we're not being vulnerable, when we're not being open, we are actually picking up shame, guilt, condemnation, because we know that it doesn't belong to us. So how did you get it? How did you get rejection? How did you get abandonment? How did you get shame and guilt and condemnation? What did it, where did it come from? It usually comes when we hide the nakedness of who we are. Oh my God. It normally comes when we try to see ourselves more highly than others. It normally comes when we have on a facade or a mask in the presence of God. See, we used to having a mask with people. We're used to lying to people. We're used to not being truthful with people. So when it comes to our prayer life, watch this. 
We either go to God with a mask or we don't go to him at all. Oh, yes, yes. I'm going to talk heaven to you today. Because it's too many people that say that they love the Lord, but they don't have a prayer life. It's too many people who say that they love the Lord, but don't know the last time that they done picked up their scripture. They say that they love the Lord, but they have the most a stubborn heart towards God. And this is why the Bible said that you can have, that there's a power, but you deny. Wait, you, you have the, uh, uh, oh, what's the scripture? The, uh. A form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So you got a form of godliness. The form of godliness is to pretend as if you're a godly person. You know, the form of godliness is to have a scripture on your head, on your on your hat. Uh, the form of godliness is to have the scripture on your tag. You know what I'm saying? Like the form of godliness. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like, like that's a form of godliness, but you ain't got no power. Why? Because power comes from the presence. Woo. Oh, yeah, I'm teaching real good. It, this is heaven. Power comes from the presence of God. Woo. Power, true power comes when you yield and when you humble yourself, when you're naked, that's where the power come from. So that's why believers, watch this. Oh, even when the disciples, they said, well, why couldn't we cast out that demon? And God, and Jesus said to them, he said that there are some things that come what? Through prayer and fasting. And the reason why many of you all won't be able to cast out demons because you don't have a prayer life and you're definitely not fasting if you're not praying. Mm, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Now, isn't it, isn't it ironic, and I don't even know why I'm going here, that you'll do an intermittent fast for your physical appearance, but you won't do a fast for your spiritual awareness, huh? for your spiritual well-being. Oh, Lord have mercy. Who am I talking to? Thank you for sharing this out. You will do a fast when they say that you'll lose weight, but you won't, you'll, you'll lose weight naturally, but you won't, you won't do a fast that'll cause you to lose weight in the realm of the spirit and to gain power. Uh. Mm, 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 mm. So this is why you may not be seeing results in your life because a true godly life, a, 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 a godly, true Christian believer, this is a lifestyle. This is not a Jesus suit that you're wearing. And this is not to condemn you, but it's to convict you. It's to cause you to come on up. Because there's another realm of glory. There is more that God wants to pour into you. There are secrets that God wants to reveal to you. But he can't if you're not in his presence. So I pray for a lifestyle change for you. Wow. I pray for a lifestyle change for you. Yeah, I pray for a lifestyle change. I pray that your 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 life. I pray that your life would change. I pray that you would yield to the presence of God even the more so. I pray that you realize that you don't have to sound like everybody else. You don't have to do it like everybody else. Because, baby, if y'all hear uh, Evangelist Latrice Ryan's pray, baby. Yes, baby. Kingdom Sniper. Oh, you hear that woman of God pray? You be like, you know what, God? I ain't even going to try it. <laughs> and it make you not even want to show up <laughs> because of how, how, how they show up. You get what I'm saying? Man, I'm like, God, I want to pray like Evangelist Ryan. But... And watch this. I said, I remember saying one day, I said, God, I want to pray like Evangelist, evangelist Ryan. And y'all know that. You know, we love her. I was like, God, I want to pray like her. God said, okay, you can pray like her, but you, you won't have the power or you won't have the evidence or the results that she does. Why? Because you are trying to mimic man. Oh my God. Who am I talking to? The more that you try to mimic man, the more that you try to do it like everybody else, you may be able to mimic and mock what they do. But the scripture said that God cannot be mocked. And so in other words, you won't be able to, uh, 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 you won't be able to, Imitate Ooh, the power of God. You won't have the results. And so what happened is, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. 
is that when other people tried, I don't even know why I'm here, tried to do it like everybody else, right? So you pick up their form, you pick up their style, and, and you don't have a, a true relationship with God. It make you turn to other deities. It make you turn to, to, to other dogmas. It make you turn to, to other religions. It make you turn to the quick get rich anointing. It make you turn to psychics. It make you use uh, zodiac signs. It make you, uh, it, it, it just make you imitate the presence of God without really carrying, without really embodying the presence of God. Man, this is too heavy. This is too heavy. This is so good. Man. So don't, don't, don't try to do it like nobody else. Okay. Don't try to do it like nobody else. When you're in the presence of God, and I know that I'm helping somebody, is that when you're in the presence of God, God will give you your own language. When you're in the presence of God, God will give you your own sound. He'll even give you your flow for prayer. You see what I'm saying? I had, um, I remember I had went to a, a conference or maybe I, I was a speaker or something at conference. And, you know, this lady, she got on the elevator. She was like, oh my God. She was like, I, I just want to pray like you. And I'm like, okay, you want to pray like me? That means that you're going to have to suffer like me if you want the authenticity of what I carry. So before you say that you want something that somebody else have, understand that that, that suffering that they had to go through in order to get that sound. Man, because I remember when I first gave my life to Christ, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm being raised up as a leader. I remember telling First Lady McCrew, I was like, ooh, you know, like I, I want a sound. Like I, I literally wanted to have a sound. I really wanted to learn how to pray and all of that stuff. Like I, I want to have a sound. And so I remember probably about Probably about 10 years later, 15 years later, whatever. She's like, oh, D, you got that sound now. You got that sound. But I didn't know that I had to go through suffering for the sound. Nobody told me that I had to suffer for a sound. So you, you suffer for what you're asking God for. That There's no, no glory without the suffering. So every sound, every flow that comes with a measure of suffering that many of you all won't be able to handle. It comes with a measure of humbling that many of you all won't be able to handle. Okay. See your mama drop dead. Go through a divorce after 16 years. Come on. Bury three of your kids. Have a miscarriage. Okay. That's just part of my suffering. For the sound. That sometimes. That's what I'm like. It's crazy though. Because for me. I, I feel sorry. For anybody who is jealous. Or envious of me. Of anything. That I have. Or. Or any place that I go. Or any opportunity that I have. Like I really feel sorry. Because the measure of suffering. That I have to go through. Like the way that I have to humble myself. The things that I would do. But I can't do. Because of the grace. And the anointing that's on my life. Like I don't wish my suffering on my worst enemy. So when you see somebody like me. JD, like when you see God raising people up, y'all pray. Y'all pray. Say something encouraging. Help, help a sister out. Help a brother out. Because you know that they have to come crushing before the elevation. I have nothing left. I, I said, God, I, I got nothing left of me. God, you can have every bit of pride. You can have every bit of arrogance. God, I don't even need my name no more. Like, God, whatever that you want. My life don't even belong. This is how crushed that I've been. So I know like a lot of times, like I may be laughing and have a good time, but I've been so crushed for the sake of the gospel and for the anointing like nothing in my life belongs to me. Y'all may have a nice house, 
But I don't even think God gave me that house for me. He gave me that house so his glory can be displayed. That when people see it, and I began to testify about the goodness of God. Yeah, God gave me this car. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. And I love driving it there. But I don't even think he gave it to me. He gave it as a witness as to what happened when you endured the crushing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so just be careful. Like when you become envious and you, you know, you want what's on somebody else's life. Just be careful about what you're asking for because some of you all are suffering right now because you wanted somebody else's oil so bad. So God was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to take you through the process and then you still won't get the oil. Oh, what happened if God still take you through the suffering process of somebody else, but you still don't have the oil? <laughs> oh, I got scripture to back that up. <laughs> oh, my God. Man. Hey, Cynthia, God bless you. Man, so I just wanted to just share this with you guys because, I don't know, all of this I wasn't even planning on sharing, but I just wanted to, you know, share what the Lord had given um, had given me. And I want to share with you guys my experience today, baby. Yes. Hey, Frankie. Hey, Shante. You got to go back and listen to the replay. Hey, Brittany, God bless you guys. Hey, Miss Lee. Hey, y'all. Hey, Joyce Ann, God bless you. Hey, Miss Gloria, God bless you guys. So thank you guys so much for sharing this out. I got to get to work. Uh, I got to start back working. But anywho, may you guys be blessed by the words of this testimony on today. May something, may, may you not just listen to a lie. May your life be impacted by it. May you go back and do a self-evaluation and to say, God, what is it that you really wanted me to hear? May you listen to the replay and say, God, you know what? Like, what is it that I need to do different? God, make, make, make the word stand out to me. Because listen, watch this. This is why I don't listen to everybody. Check this out. I don't listen to everybody because what you listen to, you now become accountable to. Which means that you are accountable for the word that you heard. Which means that something usually needs to change in your life. There's accountability that comes with your listening. That's why I don't need to listen to everything. I don't listen to everything. I don't listen to everybody. Like there's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All right, you guys. Well, I love you guys. I want you guys to have a fantastic day. God bless you guys. Thanks for sharing this out. Bye.